Hello, Leo. Thank you for joining me for your weekly forecast for week commencing the 22nd of October. Your home and your sense of peace and tranquility in your environment are certainly going to be to the fore as the sun travels into the sign of Scorpio on Tuesday. But there is a full moon which occurs on Wednesday in the opposite sign of Taurus, and that's going to be close to the rather restless and erratic energies of Uranus. There could be something that's going to happen in your worldly interaction, perhaps in a job, which could demand you to suddenly change your plans, be more flexible, alter your hours at work, cover for a colleague that could have some impact on your desire to create peace and tranquility. If you are looking to develop your home in any kind of decorative or even structural way, this can be a fine time to really put your plans into motion, particularly with Venus forging a fine link with Saturn in the second half of this week. But this week also sees a complex grand cross, which is influenced partly by the nodal axis with the north node in your sign. I think what we're talking about here, Leo, is your desire to be an individual, but this needs to be traded off against your own desire to nurture yourself or those you love at the heart of your world. And of course, there are going to be other demands from a partner, from your work or worldly interactions. And it may require you to be a bit more flexible about an issue that up until now, you may have been quite settled on your approach. Now you may need to rethink this a little bit. But if you can do this, there are real opportunities to grow and flourish. It's been a real pleasure being with you. I'd love it if you would like or comment on this video. Or if you've yet to do so, please do subscribe to this channel. Thank you. Hello Leo, thank you for joining me for your monthly forecast for October for the Sun or the Ascendant. Your everyday communications and thinking are very much in the astral spotlight this month, particularly in the first nine days when Mercury, the planet which controls this activity anyway, is in a prime location for you to really sparkle when it comes to demonstrating pe to people just how quick-witted you are, how much you can engage with ideas, express talents and flair of your own. And most of all, there's a kind of pace and energy to proceedings, which is going to be really fun to be part of. Now, there is going to be a very, very important new moon in this sector on the 9th. But if we wind back to the second of the month, there is a quarter moon. And this occurs in the part of your scope known as the 12th house, which is very much to do with reflection, the more psychological side of life. That angles to the sun in the third, so we have a 12th, third house axis. I think it's possible across the following week that you may find yourself questioning some of your ideas or some of your belief systems or some gossip can be doing the rounds. If someone does tell you something in confidence, it's probably best to keep it close to your chest. But equally, just be aware that other people can be talking about some of your situation and not necessarily in the most informed way. Now, the big news, the astral news this month, that's coming out through the YouTube airways particularly, is going to be about Venus going into a retrograde on the 5th. Now that's going to go on in the sign of Scorpio through to the end of this month and through to the middle of next month, November, in the sign of Libra. Because, of course, it's inverting, therefore goes back one sign in November. So what does it mean for you, this Venus retrograde? Venus retrograde, in some ways, is a bit like Mercury retrograde, but just in a different way. Venus is about relating, of course. It's about love. It's also about our taste. It's about aesthetic called beauty. So very often Venus rules our environment in some way. If you're someone who has particular pride in the way you keep your home, you like it to have a certain style, then Venus is probably quite prominent in your natal horoscope. 
in this part of a Leo's horoscope, I think there can be some rethinking around your home situation. Now, Venus, of course, always also has an impact on money. So it's possible that you could be thinking about home-based business, something to do with crafts, using your hands. And because it's in your fourth solar house, I think it may be that there could be some thinking around your family situation too. And also the third house energy that's buzzing around can be about brothers and sisters, so siblings. Now, Venus in the fourth house can also, of course, be about loving because Venus is about relating, but it's the more feminine side of relating. And you may find yourself thinking that through again, especially if you're yearning for a more nurturing type of a lifestyle or intimate time that you're already involved in. So if there is an opportunity for do, to, to do more for a partner, if you have one, then certainly thinking about their needs and trying to meet them can be a good thing to do with Venus tracking backwards. But generally, it just gives us all much more food for thought. But that new moon, which occurs on the 9th, ordinarily would be a wonderful opportunity to sparkle ever more effervescently. You are one of the most charismatic of all the zodiac signs. But this particular uh, new moon does have two very big influences on it. The first concerns Pluto. Since 2008, Pluto has been shaken up the way you think about your life organisation, and also about your work and potentially about anything to do with health, fitness, diet and exercise, stuff like that. Now that's squaring up to this particular new moon. So your thinking around those areas could become a bit stressful in the following week. But also this new moon forges an obtuse link to Neptune. So anything to do with very close alliances and your thoughts can also come under the astral microscope. So along with Venus tracking backwards, I think there is the potential for a little bit of tension, and especially if you're trying to get a lot done, you're trying to be very quick, um, trying to be as busy as possible, certainly uh, the full, uh, the new moon, sorry, squaring up with Pluto, can create a situation where maybe you're trying to force the pace a little bit. Try to slow things down. Try to have virtuous aims, which obviously Saturn and Pluto are asking you to have, but not in such a way that it makes things very brittle and you become rather tense about things. Now, Mercury is going to be moving on the 10th, moving into Scorpio, joining up with Venus, and of course, we already have Jupiter here too. And Jupiter has been gifting you with some potential good fortune over the last year as it's been making its way through this sector, but at the end of the day, Jupiter is about growth. So if you've moved, upgraded, uh, there's been some ins and outs in terms of who lives where you live, then that really wouldn't be a surprise. But I think Mercury moving into the fourth house can actually inhibit us a little bit in terms of our emotional communication. The tendency here is to let thoughts go around our mind rather than say exactly how we feel. There's also a quarter moon on the 16th in Capricorn, which is going to be emphasising that potential for tension and brittleness. So again, try to relax as much as possible. The great news, however, this month is that Mars in your opposite sign, which may have made you a bit feistier in your interactions with others, even a bit more competitive since the second week of May, that's no longer clashing with Uranus as it was from then through to the end of last month, the end of September. We can all let out a sigh of relief about that, but Venus is actually squaring with Mars in the first two weeks of this month. This again points towards if there's some kind of disharmony or lack of unity around some kind of close relationship, it may show itself. So I think all of this will be giving you a lot of food for thought, particularly once the Sun moves into Scorpio on the 23rd. Then you may find it's better to just Create a few more moments of solitude, of silence, of quiet meditation. You may want to just gather your thoughts, keep people a little, a little more of a distance. But the retreat in Venus then connects with the sun. When Venus and the sun go together, uh, it can be said sometimes that Venus can almost be diminuted. 
I actually feel it will reinforce the vibe of Venus. So across those few days, don't be surprised if you do want to improve some aspects of your home by splashing out on something that would make it more comfortable or some kind of uh, item which is just purely from, from a more artistic or creative uh, viewpoint, just going to add pleasure to your existence. But we also reach a critical point here, because Uranus may not be squaring up with Mars anymore, but it is going to be opposite Venus and also the Sun. This is very, very intense stuff. If there is something about your home life that's being interrupted by the demands of work, or work itself just seems unpredictable, or someone you interact with seems to be making demands on you, and being more outspoken and not necessarily understanding how sensitive you can be at times, if also really quite surprisingly private about your personal feelings. This could create a lot of tension at this point, not least because at this point also the uh, reversing or in, inverting North Node in your sign, which arrived on the 10th of May 2017 and will be with you until the 7th of November 2018, well that moves to come into uh, the opposition between Uranus, Venus and the Sun, creating a grand fixed cross. Now this may all sound a bit complex, but essentially the North Node in your sign, the Dragon's Head, is like a mini Jupiterian influence. And since that May the 10th of last year, it's given you extra encouragement to be more creative and to invest more in your individual talents. That's a very good thing. But this is going to be inverting back into your 12th uh, solar house in November, which is going to see you much more reflective, much more uh, connected to the more emotional side of your nature. And I think this particular Grand Cross can see you reach a bit of a a point in your whole existence really which makes you think about whether you're on the right track or not perhaps around work perhaps around home perhaps around intimate relationships because the south node is in your sector of relating and of course stormy mars is still there however there is also a very potent an extraordinarily potent full moon which occurs on the 26th because this is going to be conjunct Uranus. And if there is any situation, be it professionally, privately, in a relationship, where you feel your power is really being limited, your voice is not being heard, or perhaps you've been too much of a role player following along with what you think other people expect of you, to the point where your own needs are being minimised, I think this can be highly important to you over the following two weeks. You might find yourself being much more rebellious and you may find it very painful to be so, but it could actually be really positive for you because as the month comes to a close, Mercury switches into the sign of Sagittarius. Although it is in detriment in Sagittarius technically, for you this is good. You're suddenly going to regain your voice, regain your sense of humour and potentially start to come out of the rather crab-like state that you've gone into in the last week or so of the month when you may feel particularly tender, particularly wounded by some people's attitudes or desire to be freer around you, to break down something that for you has been set in stone, some kind of rhythm or regularity has to change, Leo, whether it's coming from you or coming from others. Staying exactly as you are is probably not an option. But with Mars in the sign of Aquarius, free of Venus by the half uh, point of this month, free of Uranus, that does give you a feistiness which can be good for you. You can lay down boundaries of what you will accept. And with Mercury moving at the very end of this month, your personality power is really going to burst back into the fore. So, a complex month in some ways. Yes, Venus retrograde is at the heart of this. I think you're evolving around your needs, what you want, what you're prepared to give, and you can be one of the most generous of all the zodiac signs but it has to work for you too. It can't be all give and no get, but equally, don't try too hard to please everyone this month. It is important to please ourselves too. It's been a real pleasure with you. Thank you so much for the lovely comments 
people keep sending in about my rheumatoid arthritis, which has been incredibly painful, and I've lost a lot of weight. Uh, I'm on steroids at the moment to try and stabilise it, but then I have to go on to a much more powerful drug. But I am, at the moment, still embracing all the natural uh, remedies, so many good suggestions, which I have taken seriously. And there is some sign of promise with those, and if I can avoid going on the heavy stuff, then obviously I will. But the initial medication, hydroxychloroquine, just has not worked. But thank you so much, good luck for October, and goodbye for now. Hello, thank you so much for watching my video. I'd love you to join me at my Horoscope Ace app. You can find this at www.horoscope-ace.com. You can use it through Android, iOS, Apple or Facebook. Check out your Ascendant or your Moon site or download your free birth chart. There's all your favourite videos, plus there are daily, weekly, monthly and yearly horoscopes for general, love, Chinese and Indian astrology. If your passion is tarot, there's my brilliant three-card Money or Love Tarot readings too. And it's all there at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thank you.